So let me talk about the project status. We are a small team, uh, only came together less than a year ago. And uh, with this small team, what we're doing is really we're orchestrating a larger community of people that contribute to this project. We currently have more than a dozen people that uh, work most of their time on our project, really basically being uh, funded by the companies that are working with us, that are supporting the SCS project. Uh, the three of us that work centrally are supported by funding from the Agency for Disruptive Innovation in Germany, uh, which we're really grateful for, and we are trying to get some more funding uh, from the Ministry for uh, Economy and uh, Energy in Germany. So in the end, uh, the we believe there will be some association or maybe foundation that will be the home for the central coordination work, but that's still being worked out. Uh, the ecosystem of uh, partners and working with us is actually growing, so we do have uh, discussions with uh, interested uh, companies and we're actually growing uh, every month uh, by a few companies, which is really great to see. Uh, we already have SCS installations at some providers most of them virtual, and I'll talk about what that means in a second. We are part of the Gaia-X project, uh, so we are a work package in the Gaia-X uh, uh, project, and we intensely collaborate with uh, several groups, uh, other groups in this uh, uh, Gaia-X project. Most, uh, maybe one example being the uh, Identity and Access Management Group, uh, which uh, where we're using some infrastructure together to uh, move forward to have some test environment and some technology in place. There will be a Gaia-X Summit uh, at uh, the 19th and 20th of uh, November and I would like to invite everyone to uh, join. It's a virtual event so it's easy to join. Uh, we also actually have a bit of public coverage so there's uh, web pages obviously from the uh, people that support us, uh, but also then uh, like the German computer magazine CT, or we have like a, a feature in a podcast uh, from a, a German radio station. Uh, we are, have actually listed uh, some of those on our web page, which is HTTPS SCS dot community. Um, and of course, we're looking for more contributions. So you can see a snapshot of our web page. And of course, we also have uh, quite a bit of code uh, out there written. Uh, it's available on GitHub. Uh, on the technical side, uh, it's a technical conference. So let me share some of the technology work that we've already been uh, doing. Right now, we do have automation in place to implement uh, part of the stack that we're working on, so infrastructure like uh, the virtualization of your computer resources, like storage virtualization using uh, Ceph, uh, like network uh, virtualization using Open vSwitch. Um, actually, we're currently switching over to OVN. Um, um, database uh, management uh, tooling like monitoring uh, the automation uh, using Ansible database, message queuing, all there. Um, so uh, we can do a bare metal install uh, using a mass for this. Um, we then collect the inventory using Netbox, uh, have Savix in place for having monitoring uh, solution in there. Um, and then on top of that, we start really rolling out uh, with Ansible. Uh, we're rolling out uh, basically Docker containers uh, that provide the various services uh, such as Ceph, such as the uh, core OpenStack services. So we're really building on top of Color Ansible here. Um, we can also do a virtual deployment. Uh, so we don't start with uh, doing bare metal installations, but we're actually uh, using virtual machines uh, and then deploy uh, uh, the Docker containers in there. That's what we call the test bed. Uh, and it's great for re, uh, testing for RCI tests. It's also great for demos. Um, if you're actually using nested virtualization, performance is decent. So we can actually do some, some reasonable work there. Um, we're using Terraform actually to uh, do the virtual deployment with the test bed. 
Um, currently, we have physical deployments uh, with two providers, uh, one on BetterCloud that's actually in production, uh, and one with Plus Server, which is going to be launched uh, early next year. Um, and the virtual deployments actually we have them running on top uh, of OpenStack environments from a number of uh, our partners, and it's actually fairly easy to get uh, working. Uh, so we uh, actually uh, add uh, companies to that list um, uh, very, very soon. Um, we have not yet um, done the work to use Terraform to actually deploy on top of uh, Amazon or maybe just Libvirt on a single machine. So we're currently deploying actually the SCS uh, stack, which includes OpenStack on top of a pre-existing uh, OpenStack uh, infrastructure. Uh, we do also uh, have a Keycloak as an identity proxy in there, and we've actually um, carved that out to provide some test environment uh, being used in the IAM project uh, in the Gaia X uh, space uh, to support our colleagues to um, make progress uh, with technology there. Um, currently, um, if you're asking, well, what do I need to do to be SCS compliant and compatible? We have not written all of that down yet. And right now, um, I would say, well, look at what SCS deploys and consider that as the standard. Obviously, we need to get better than that and uh, really write down and, and create tests uh, that allow you to determine what does compatibility mean. On the container layer, which is, of course, the very important piece because that's what most uh, modern cloud native applications are built against, uh, we're currently looking at projects like SAP Gardener, uh, Kubernetes, uh, Rancher. We're also uh, talking to the giant swarm people. And one of the challenges we have in that space is right now that the Kubernetes cluster management does not yet appear to be standardized as well as it should be. So we're currently uh, fighting that a bit. Obviously, uh, our goal is to provide standard interfaces. So um, we don't need to um, live with very uh, a lot of change uh, going forward uh, as technology changes. And that's something that still needs to be worked on. Um, we're currently looking how we can actually overcome that challenge. We do have proof of concept work with uh, Garden Kubernetes Rancher running, so you can actually deploy a container a Kubernetes uh, cluster management solution uh, on top of uh, the base SCS stack. Um, but it's not yet actually working according to things we consider standardizable. Um, we currently consider actually shipping with the OpenStack Kubernetes cluster API provider because that seems to provide a minimal set of standardized APIs and then build on top of that, um, hopefully actually being able to work with one of the uh, companies mentioned here going forward. So we actually have a uh, Kubernetes as a service layer that actually uh, goes beyond uh, just OpenStack environments. Um, here's like a short view on the workflow if you do a deployment of uh, SCS. Um, there's two different uh, possibilities to deploy. The, the first one you see here is uh, a physical deployment. Obviously, you need to then do some manual work like uh, putting servers in racks, uh, doing the cabling, um, and then starting a deployment uh, using mass netbox, uh, deploying SABIX to do hardware monitoring there. Uh, and then a fully automated process starts uh, using Ansible, deploying all the software uh, in a standardized uh, way with standard configuration. Um, you can do the whole the same thing uh, in a virtual test bed. Here, the, the bootstrap uh, is much easier because uh, you can use just Terraform uh, to de deploy VMs and then uh, start the Ansible uh, driven installation from there. The whole thing takes less than 90 minutes, depends a bit on the network connectivity and the performance of your infrastructure. And we have that running on a number of uh, systems, uh, and we have, uh, we're fortunate to have uh, great partners that are supporting us, giving us access to their infrastructure from uh, OTC, OVH, City Network, um, where we have this running. I'll not do a demo here. Um, the infrastructure that's being set up in the testbed deployment really is just using four nodes. We have three hyperconverged nodes that bring 
uh, block storage, uh, virtualize that using Ceph, and also deploy all the OpenStack um, services that you need, uh, along with a number of uh, infrastructure services. And there's one management node that you can access as an administrator uh, to actually control the whole environment. Um, getting it to run is fairly easy. Um, if you have access to an OpenStack environment that is standard, uh, you will not have any trouble. You actually really fill in a handful of um, infrastructure dependent um, information, such as the uh, flavors of the uh, VMs that you want to use, the name of the uh, Ubuntu image that you want to, to use to deploy. Uh, and that's basically it. Um, if you are uh, trying to do this on OVH or on the Open Telecom Cloud, you will need uh, a few workarounds because um, there are some aspects of those uh, two platforms that are not fully standard. Uh, and once you have done the deployment successfully, you can actually access the web interfaces and see how the uh, SCS environment works. We haven't done the work yet to port the uh, Terraform recipes to also work on LibWord or, or maybe even on Amazon. Uh, because it has not been a priority yet. But if you're interested uh, on that, let us know. I will work with you to get that done. Um, once you've done deployment, you will have access to a number of dashboards. And I've just uh, shown one to you here, which is a net data, which is kind of a neat uh, and nice looking tool to do some live uh, observations of your system. Uh, it's not what I expect operations teams to use most in practice, because most in practice you want to collect monitoring data and store that in a, a time series database and uh, maybe and just um, analyze that later or maybe watch for trends and alarms. Uh, Net data really gives you a live view, which is nice if you want to, for example, look uh, for some uh, performance challenges or have some, some live issues that they want you to debug. Uh, here's the uh, quick view on the architecture. So. Um, on the bottom layer, we do have a virtualization for a compute storage network um, using standard technologies that you would probably expect from the open source uh, universe, such as uh, the Linux uh, kernel and operating system, uh, KVM for virtualization, libvirt to, to control and drive that on the storage side using Ceph and uh, Rados. Uh, on the networking side, you using open vSwitch uh, and OVN technology. Um, and then on top of that, we do have uh, the OpenStack um, services. Uh, just, it's basically just the core services plus a handful uh, that we have chosen that we need for uh, specific reasons. Um, maybe uh, important to note is that uh, we do consider the OpenStack services as an optional standard. That means uh, we know that some of the providers we're working with uh, want to not expose these services and not necessarily standardize on these because all they want to provide to their customers is a container and Kubernetes layer uh, on top. So this will not be exposed in, in such a case. If it is exposed, it can be uh, certified and standard, uh, standardized and certified really tested against the standard. Uh, there's one piece at the um, infrastructure layer that we actually uh, want to use as a standard, which is the uh, S3 protocol, that that is the most commonly used object storage interface. So it's something uh, that we want to provide uh, as a standard there. On the container layer, you see uh, several uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters here, because we believe that um, uh, the Kubernetes cluster itself should be uh, able to deployed uh, as a self-service infrastructure. Um, and Kubernetes is not just Kubernetes itself, but it also is tied in with the underlying infrastructure via the storage and the networking interface. And there's also some standard tooling that are around Kubernetes that you uh, expect there to be. All these pieces are part of the standard SCS platform. So uh, developers can rely on them being available. If you're looking at the left side of this graph, um, you will see a selection of operational tools. Uh, those are rolled out if you deploy the SCS stack, uh, and they really help operators to run such a platform. So we do have um, monitoring pieces such as Prometheus, uh, NetData, Skydive, Cortex in there. 
uh, we do have some CI tooling, which is really building on top of Sewell. Um, for logging, we have the ELK stack for automation Ansible. Um, the whole thing really provides automation uh, to deploy, but also at least as importantly and more difficult uh, automation to do updating. So the whole lifecycle management uh, is one of those things that a number of operators struggle with. And it's really one of the things that we want to provide solutions to. Um, on the right hand side, you see the identity and access management uh, technologies that uh, we currently look at. Um, obviously, in the end, uh, we do expect customers want to be able to do federation using the SAML and the OpenID Connect protocols. Those are really standard protocols in the identity federation space. And those are also the ones that uh, are currently being uh, used in the GAIA-X demonstrator that's being built. So we are actually helping uh, there to provide technology to make that work. Um, we do have a uh, keystone in place to drive the OpenStack um, services. And we do also deploy a key cloak. So we have an identity proxy that we can use to do uh, the federation and the identity um, federation mapping. So very often in identity uh, federation, the challenge you have is you have certain attributes stored in your identity provider, and then you need to map those attributes to certain roles or rights uh, in, in your infrastructure. So that can be uh, fairly nicely done using uh, key clock. Um, UCS is technology from Univention that we use to uh, store uh, and manage identities that uh, need to be managed locally. And uh, it has nice uh, technology in there to do things like password rotation or passport policies, for example. Um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, so here's a quick look on the roadmap. And obviously, the more I look into the future of that roadmap, the less uh, well-defined uh, things are. Uh, uh, basically documenting that there's a, a lot of things that we have on our radar that we uh, want to work on without necessarily having a very detailed plan at what point in time exactly we are able to deliver certain pieces. Uh, what we're currently looking at most uh, is really to uh, work on the uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster management standardization challenge. Uh, this is the thing I mentioned that uh, we lack some, some standard or maturity of standards and adoption of standards in that space. So we're trying to work with uh, the community there to see whether we can make some progress. And, and then the second uh, very important piece still that we're looking at this year is that we want to really strengthen the test coverage in RCI because uh, the vision we have is that we want to enable providers to really do daily updates of their production environment. Uh, and that is something that obviously requires a, a high level uh, of testing so you can create the confidence that uh, doing these daily updates doesn't break anything. Uh, we are aware that not every provider will uh, follow that policy, but we really consider it best practice for us as a, as a provider uh, to at least enable that model and make sure we have the processes in place that this can be done. So let me summarize what we have. Um, we believe that for data sovereignty, it's very important to have control uh, over your infrastructure. Um, we are building a network of providers. So we really believe that the target picture is uh, to have a large choice of providers uh, that provide infrastructure services that are interoperable, that are federatable. So it's really not about building one European hyperscaler here. It's really about building a very healthy ecosystem. And in order to achieve that, uh, we need to make sure that providing such infrastructure becomes a lot easier than it is today. Uh, and we do that by delivering a standard software stack and more importantly, by helping providers to overcome the challenges with operating that infrastructure. Um, so that is really the, the main uh, work we're doing is to work with the provider ecosystem to share best practices, to build better operations uh, and to really become better um, in providing high quality infrastructure. Um, current status is we have actually successfully built automation to deploy already infrastructure operational tooling, uh, infrastructure as a service 
and that is something that is actually being used. So we are doing daily rollouts, uh, running RCI over that. Um, and it's also actually already in production with one cloud provider, which is Better Cloud. Um, the next pieces we really need to do is to uh, work on the Kubernetes uh, cluster management interfaces to get some standardization there so we can deliver something um, uh, hopefully with, with one or maybe all three of those um, companies uh, listed here. Uh, but this is something that will still uh, being discussed. So this is where we are. Um, I hope uh, this was interesting to you. I hope we, I could entice some of you to really uh, join us and work with us. And uh, hopefully I also have uh, created enough interest that there are some questions. So Christian and myself will be available to answer questions now.